What powers our world? Cars, factories, electricity, airplanes, all of it, fueled by one thing, oil. But what if that never happened? What if oil, that black liquid gold buried under our feet, was never discovered in the 20th century? How would the modern world look? Would we still have global superpowers? Would we even have modern civilization as we know it? Today, we're diving into a world where the 20th century ran on steam, not gasoline. Let's be clear, oil exists in the earth. In this alternate timeline, it's just not discovered. No oil boom in Texas, no gushers in Saudi Arabia, no standard oil, no Exxon. The liquid fossil fuel is either too deep, too expensive, or simply ignored. Instead, humanity leans harder into what it already knows, coal, steam, wind, and maybe, just maybe, early forms of electricity. The 19th century was already a steam-powered world. Trains, factories, even ships ran on coal. So what happens when we don't move on from that? Basically, the steam age never ends. Instead of being a stepping stone to oil, it becomes the main stage for technological innovation. In this timeline, coal becomes king and stays king. Coal powers not just trains, but cars, and maybe even small-scale aircraft, though with obvious limitations. Internal combustion engines either never take off or evolve very differently, relying on synthetic or biofuels derived from plants, algae, or animal fats. Electricity is still discovered, but its distribution is way slower. Without oil, the mass expansion of cheap plastics, petrochemicals, and gasoline never happens. There's no easy way to make lightweight cars or fuel them affordably. That means cities grow vertically, not outward. Dense, walkable, electrified. Instead of sprawling suburbs and highways, we might have massive electric tram systems, airships instead of airplanes, and bicycle-powered delivery networks. Solar and wind power? They become serious contenders, out of necessity. By the 1950s, countries would invest heavily in capturing sunlight and wind currents just to keep cities powered. Hydroelectric power booms, maybe even geothermal. No oil means no gasoline cars. In our timeline, Ford's Model T revolutionized transportation. But in this world, that revolution stalls. Steam-powered cars do exist, but they're clunky, slow to start, and high maintenance. That makes mass car ownership way less likely. Public transport becomes the norm. Intercity travel? Trains dominate. Planes, without jet fuel, aviation technology stagnates. Instead, you get rigid airships, possibly powered by gas turbines, hydrogen, or solar energy. Remember the Hindenburg. In this timeline, airships never fall out of favor, they evolve. Modern airships cruise the skies, slow but luxurious, like floating cruise ships. In cargo, it's all rail and ship-based. Giant diesel container ships never exist. Instead, think nuclear-powered cargo trains and steam-driven freighters. Oil shapes geopolitics. It defines modern power. The Middle East never becomes the geopolitical hotspot it is today. Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq. Without oil, they remain regional players, not global influencers. Instead, countries rich in coal or hydro resources dominate. Think Canada, Norway, Russia, and parts of Africa. The US still powerful, thanks to its coal reserves and industrial base. But its dominance might be slower to build. Without oil fueled expansion, the American highway system never gets built. Suburbia doesn't explode. Instead of McDonald's off every exit, you get centralized cities with walkable cores. Globalization is slower too. Shipping goods across oceans without cheap oil is expensive. That means more local manufacturing, shorter supply chains, and maybe, just maybe, more sustainable economies. World War I still happens. That was a trench in artillery war, not dependent on oil. But World War II? That's a different story. In our timeline, the Nazis blitzed across Europe with panzer tanks, fueled by synthetic gasoline. The Allies won thanks to oil-rich reserves and logistical superiority. But without oil, wars are slower. Mechanized warfare is limited. Tanks are fewer. Planes are rare. You fight with trains, railguns, and maybe electrified battlefield tech. Strategy focuses on rail lines, not fuel depots. Navies, no aircraft carriers. Instead, massive coal-fired battleships and maybe even wind-assisted sailing vessels, modernized clipper ships with steel hulls and advanced navigation. The atomic bomb still happens since uranium isn't dependent on oil. But delivering that bomb, that's a different challenge altogether. Imagine your life without plastic. No oil means no cheap polymers, no plastic packaging, no disposable everything. Instead, materials remain natural. Wood, metal, glass, wool, cotton. Packaging is reusable or biodegradable. Clothes are handmade or slowly machine woven, no fast fashion. Electronics are more expensive. Why? Because wires are thicker, insulation is natural, and parts can't be cheaply molded. Medicine changes too. 
no plastic syringes, no cheap pharmaceuticals synthesized from oil by products. Surgery tools are metal, sterilized, and reused. And no plastic also means fewer microplastics in the ocean, one silver lining. When necessity becomes the mother of invention, humans get creative. Energy innovation happens faster in some ways, slower in others. Nuclear power becomes central far earlier. Maybe by the 1960s, nuclear energy is widespread, even in homes. Wind farms, solar panels, geothermal, they're all seen as urgent, not optional. Not, but the lack of cheap energy slows down computing. Early computers required massive power. Without oil, that energy is harder to get, so computers might evolve more slowly, or be limited to elite institutions for decades. The internet? It still arrives, eventually. They can us, but it's slower, maybe more centralized and less chaotic. Without oil money, petrostates never emerge. Saudi Arabia doesn't fund religious extremism or massive infrastructure. Venezuela stays agrarian. Russia builds its power on coal and minerals, not pipelines. The Cold War still happens, but differently. It's a battle of nuclear, coal, and ideology. The US and Soviet Union still compete, but their proxies don't have oil wealth to fund wars. Conflicts are fewer, less intense, or more localized. Climate change? It's different. Not absent, but different. Coal is still dirty, but there's no spike in CO2 from cars and jets. Fewer highways, less deforestation for oil pipelines. Maybe climate awareness starts earlier, because people see the pollution from steam and coal plants right in their faces. So, what if oil was never discovered in the 20th century? We'd still industrialize, but slower, more locally, with more reliance on steam, wind, and the sun. It would be a world of airships, dense cities, electric trams, and fewer global empires. A world where technology is harder earned, but maybe more sustainable in the long run. Sure, it might not be as flashy, but maybe? It would be a little cleaner, a little quieter, and a little more human. If you found this alternate world as fascinating as we did, don't forget to subscribe. There's a lot more history that never happened, waiting to be explored.